Our guest in this first segment is Dirk Stansbury. He's a candidate for County Commission, Tuscarora District. Good morning, Dirk. How are you? Good morning, and thank you for having me back. You brought treats, too. <laughs> I think you called it puppy chow. Yeah, it's peanut butter, chocolate, uh, crisp X, and powdered sugar. Oh, and a nice little container. Do you, do you need the container back, Dirk? Oh, no, no. That's part of the deal. <laughs> Because yeah, I'll just put what, it, I'll empty mine into Bill's pockets. It'll be fine. Isn't that what you requested so I could get back on? <laughs> um, feed, feed the hosts. That's the, the easiest rule to follow. Note to candidates across the area, feeding the hosts. It's, it's a, a good idea. It's a tremendous it's, idea. Well, not only did uh, you have the uh, uh, COVID wipe this place, I understand the air conditioner was out, so you missed something else. Oh, yeah, that's right. We had a day where the AC went out. Mm. We've been, oh, having, we've been having issues with Comcast in terms of getting the uh, the signal out on some days, too. So it's been a fun couple of weeks. So when we left, John, it went south. Yeah. See what happens when you walk out the door? <laughs> Nothing good. Uh, Dirk, you and Bill were having some disagreement over your career earlier before the show began. Uh, Bill was correct. You're wrong, Dirk, by the way. <laughs> no. no. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell, tell us about your life in Berkeley. Well, um, when last time I got home, my wife said, you talked about everybody else but yourself. And I'm like, I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> but now's your actually chance. that is part of me because I've always been uh, looking at the people that make the community a good place to live. Mm -hmm. And that's why I brought those, you know, echoed those two people real quick on that. Um, and, and that's it. It's got to be part of the whole community. And that goes back to when I grew up, uh, grew up on a farm in Ohio, uh, uh, my family is very active. My mother had over 30 years as a 4-H advisor, uh, fair board, uh, father in the Lions Club, uh, volunteered at uh, uh, Trumpet and Land, which is an outdoor drama theater. So they, they were always involved in that. And uh, well, I went to Fairmont State, got a degree in teaching, mm -hmm. and I worked in Roan County, Marion County, uh, Harrison County, and uh, I coached football and track. And a little bit of volleyball. Um, what was, position did you coach in football? Uh, line. O line, D line. And and uh, uh, eighth and ninth grade mm -hmm. um, at Bridgeport. Good program. That's right. Uh, Wayne Jamison was there. Oh yeah. And uh, the last uh, batch of young men I worked with actually took the state. Oh, what year was that? Ah, that would have been seventy. I can't remember, 70. Somewhere in the 70s. That's good enough. 78. Yeah, because yeah. Wayne went down there a couple times. <laughs> yeah, he did. He had a few trips. So then I went back to WVU and got an engineering degree mm -hmm. and uh, came to the Panhandle in 87, and I've been engineering in the Panhandle uh, since then, working in various areas, working in Washington County. Uh, in, uh, what type of engineer are you? I'm a civil Civil engineer. Not very rowdy. I'm just civil. <laughs> very civil. You would go well at the Institute with Bill over there. Yeah. Um, but uh, sewer, water, mm -hmm. uh, some subdivisions work. So that's uh, infrastructure type work. Sure. Um, and I did a spell with the county, a county engineer, a few years back. So I'm kind of semi-retired. Uh, the other things I'm in, I'm involved in my church. Uh, Marvin Chapel, UMC. Mm -hmm. I'm on the I'm the treasurer, and I teach the uh, adult Sunday school class. Okay. Yeah, nine thirty, and church is at uh, eleven. Marvin Chapel. And why have you made the decision to run for county commission? Well, I just pointed out I feel that it has to be part of the community. You have to be involved in the community, and the things that I've seen and worked with both inside and outside of the county office and working within the state, dealing with the Department of Highways, the DEP, and all these people, I see where they're, all the interactions uh, need to be pulled together, literally. So I feel like my last big contribution to my community would be serving in the county commission. Do you have any concerns about running as a Democrat in a county that currently has five Republican county commissioners? Well, I've worked with, uh, I believe, everybody except Mr. Boyd um, and have been functioning with them, uh, working with and for 
some of them. So it's been a, a something again. It's a community, and not necessarily a uh, Democrat, Independent, Republican, because it is the community. It's the guy next door. It's the gal at the at the checkout. We're all together in this community. It's not the swamp in Charleston. It's not the swamp in D.C. It's what we need to do here for our, our families and our businesses. Bill? Yeah, uh, good morning, Dirk. Uh, uh, we had this, uh, a discussion earlier. Uh, You've been county engineer. I was thinking you were also county surveyor, uh, but you work very closely with the surveyor. So I appreciate the distinction. I did not, I don't think I fully understood the distinction. Uh, uh, Dirk, one of the leading, and you're running against an individual that uh, uh, is well known as a as, as a local delegate. Uh, one of the major issues I see the county's facing is that of home rule, and we've been got, we've received lip service from the legislators over the years, but it's never really gotten to the point that it's been uh, uh, language has been passed. Uh, Hardy knows the legislators and might very well push home rule over the uh, over the fence. Uh, what would be your how would you promote and get home rule passed? You made a valid point. Uh, the biggest thing that we do need the people in Charleston to recognize this fact. Exactly. Yes. We know it here. Yeah. And um, it might have been helpful if John would have stayed there and helped push it to that spot. Mm -hmm. And we do need, since we're now moving into double digits, back when we were three or four delegates down in Charleston, now we've moved up into, I think, 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to get uh, a larger percentage. Um, it is a little, even though they were Republicans, we had some of the uh, uh, leadership that we lost from the Eastern Panhandle. That would, that would help a little bit. Now we're back to junior members. But we need to be constantly knocking on the door. We need to be a squeaky door on this. And we need to also get our, our brothers and sisters next door, I think Jefferson County, uh, and then maybe even some of the other larger counties. We're probably one of the few counties that would qualify for this, but Monongalia may be coming up in that with uh, the university up there, and they're getting pretty big. So we, we should get with the county associations and get them to be knocking on their delegates' doors to show that this is something that we need for our area. And if nothing else, we need to get the state legislators and the administration to tell the different agencies to come and knock on our doors and talk with us before they do things. Yeah, going back to county, uh, county Commission Association, there is a, a portion of the counties that are not ready, do not want the responsibility of home rule, the smaller rural ones. So that's been one of the impediments of County Commission Association. So it, it more or less lays lies with those counties that are large enough that do have the independence and have the ability of affecting home rule. Well, the way if we write the bill correctly, they, they wouldn't be impacted at all. You would have to have certain uh, conditions necessary to bring that up, um, either like Jefferson County with zoning or with the population and the other conditions that we have here. So, you know, Pocahontas County doesn't need to, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so you, we, we do. So if it's written correctly, you don't have to force them to go one way or the other. Uh, one size does not fit all. Yeah, I understand that. But the County Commission Association has not put their full sh full weight behind that because there's a large faction of the counties that do not see the real need. Or take them some puppy chow. Yeah, take them puppy chow. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a good suggestion. Yeah. I want to go back to your running as a Democrat. and. In the, the larger national politics, we're obviously greatly divided, D's versus R's. Locally, what are the differences between Democratic principles and Republican principles in, in local politics? When you get down to the uh, democracy is local. Mm -hmm. it, it always has been. And when you start talking about the things that involve our families and our businesses, 
we're all the same. The Democrats run small business, Republicans run small business, independents have small businesses. We have children that are going to schools. We have all of those things are our focus here. And so that really isn't that much different. And as I said, I've I've worked with, with just everybody's on the uh, commission now and in the past. Um, you have a, a two party uh, group running for sheriff here, uh, the sheriff and their uh, first deputy and that's the kind of thing you need to look at we don't have a situation where the majority of the party gets to pick who gets on what committee and where who sits at the chair ours is we got to work to get our county but forward. you chose to run as a democrat as opposed to running as a republican so what drove that decision i guess what uh, i'm getting at i've been so much more than a democrat it's it's what it's about the 20th thing down the line I but mean, but it might not be to the voters though, Dirk. Is the point John's trying to right. make? Well, I can. Tell it might you. not. Be, not maybe the twentieth thing down the line to you, but Bill Stubblefield ran as an independent against Jim Barnhart for county commission, and that R beside Barnhart's name made a big difference in that election. And and I and I'm Jim, and I worked with Jim. Um, the well, I'll give you a quick answer. Um, I knocked on one door, and I heard if. Uh, if not a Republican, don't want to talk to him. But by the time I left there, um, the wife said, I hope you win. <laughs> yeah. And if, if, you, if you just talk and see that my experience in this, inside and out of the county, and dealing with everything and knowing that I'm where I am, I'm down, the, I don't like to use the word, so I don't like identifications all because some things I'm not centrist. Some things I'm very conservative and some things I'm not. I'm, I'm already pointed out that I'm fiscally. Mm -hmm. I want to find other ways to pay for things than out of our citizens' pockets. Um, so we need to look at this as something that's for, again, I will work with everybody. Um, if we have a Republican sheriff, that's the team you got to play with. You got to play with the with there. The, so I don't worry about yeah. what your party is. What are you doing for my community? Yeah, the county commission does, has never functioned as a partisan body. It is a it is a, again an elected though is a different story. But let's go to another issue that has uh, received quite a bit of press, uh, uh, and that is the the lobbyists that the county has used. Uh, what is your position of of hiring lobbyists? Well. Um, Unfortunately, my total knowledge is based upon this show. Mm -hmm. um, and Which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, listening I think to, we've covered it thoroughly. Yeah, yeah. listening to yeah. the argument, on the face of it, it sounds good. And I, I applaud that. But I don't know what the matrix that's used to say this has given us so much profit or uh, for one dollar we got five back. I don't know what the math was that came up with that and what would we have done if we didn't have it would we still got four out of that five anyway I don't know on the face of it I like it is there something else we could do and get a bigger bang out of our buck and that's the other thing I will not take anything as granted I will ask questions I'm Don Coyote I will tilt with that windmill until I find out that it's a windmill and I'm not going to win, <laughs> but at least I'm going to try until I find out that maybe it really was a dragon and we can slay it. So back to your point, on the face of it, okay, but I'm going to immediately ask questions. Show me how we got up with that number that said we got this much benefit out of this. And if, if we're getting five, ten to one, cool. Uh, if not, let's look for something else. Now, before the show, you, you had, there's there's a big development going on in in your part of the county, or that's being proposed. Your part of the county, and you're planning to go to the planning commission meeting about it. So, do you want to talk about that, the off Cedar Lane? Well, um, doesn't sound like hypocrite, but it's since I've done so much development in the county, but the situation. Uh, First of all, what's it called or proposed to be called? Shepherd. Shepherd's something. Okay. It's on Cedar Lane. All right. Um, first of all, uh, 
we need to look at what the ground can take. We've got a very heavy karst area there. Uh, I'm almost positive that the max out that they've shown is going to disappear because of rock outcrops, sinkholes. And, and that and all number that. is what? It's around 115, 20. I looked at the plat briefly uh, the other day. Uh, I don't believe they'll get anywhere near that. Maybe around 100 when they finally get it all shaken out. But there is ground there. The soils there are types that will perk. There may be a well issue. So we'll see how many they finally end up with. But I think it'll be closer to 100 than what they've got proposed. On top of that, now you're dumping out onto Cedar Lane, which is 18, 19 feet wide. The old Ridgely. little country lane. Yes, it is. And even the direct access is onto a gravel road that they're going to be forced to pave. Um, this was a question uh, where we bump heads with the state and where uh, the planning commission really doesn't get to use the word planning at all. You're talking about the road now? Yeah, just the high road, with yeah. the highway. Yeah. Because if they get a permit from the state highways, Farm highways, get a encroachment permit it's called and they find the perks and they get the wells and they comply with the DEP's requirement then it shows up they check off every little box with the Planning Commission that's required of them there's not a thing that the Planning Commission can do to that development it will go through and that's just the way the system has been run f for so long and it's because we're not getting uh, to, we don't get to work with the Department of Highways or with some of these other ones directly. They don't come to us. We ask them for help, and we don't get it. You've experienced that in your job working for the county before? Oh, Kirk? yeah. Uh, we were trying to address some drainage issues on Route 11, um, and the Department of Highways came in. We walked around. The local, we've been very uh, happy with what the, our local Department of Highways uh, administration there on Rock Cliff, they're, they're with us. After we walked the site, did all this, a month later we got a, a memo back. Uh, the reason you have all these problems up there is because Berkeley County doesn't control development. And I'm like, profanity? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't give them permits, <laughs> We can control it. So is this? A, so I understand. Is this a situation we're talking about? Let's call it a hundred homes. Pick a number. That the 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 state would say you have to expand Cedar Lane or you have to expand um, what was that Swan Pond Road? I guess to be this much bigger in order to build these. They could, and they have. They could do that. Um, I do know of a. Uh, well, sir, when do they have when? Sir Washington was required to be widened and repaved down off uh, Darksville. Now, granted, that was probably uh, a third of a mile. This would be several miles. Uh, but here's where uh, we can start to look at things if we sit down as a group and get a mutual uh, benefits meeting we get the state we get the county we get the developer and we work together we could improve Cedar Lane end to end and it's to the, everybody's benefit it's, it's a developer's benefit because you have a nice access road people are gonna you know, curb appeals yeah, except the owners who are losing their front yards to the wider road well it's actually not because it's still within the right the right away right yeah it comes down to resources the county is uh, the state saying they have limited resources that's for the roads. point yeah. i just countered though yeah. it's a cooperation we have had situations where developers have actually offered to buy and give ground to the department of highways to improve intersections and what happened no who said no Department of Highways. No, no, come on, come on, Dirk. That's not right. Yes, it uh, was right. I can give you several examples. Alan Henry on uh, the Spring Mills, 
Alan put in a light there at the request of the developers, and he funded that light. So there are several, and there's another example. And, and, and Alan will tell you that he is getting tired of doing infrastructure for his competitors. Uh, being, he was, uh, Alan, uh, Mr. Henry is a uh, uh, very well-liked gentleman who does what he can for his people, but he also has told me that he's tired of doing infrastructure improvements for his competitors. But I, this but, is why he ran that yeah. sewer line through a farm so they couldn't tie to it. I've got to jump in and put an end to this yeah. now because we only have 60 seconds left. And, Dirk, those are yours. Uh, tell people why they should vote for you for county commission. Um, as I said earlier, because this is my town and my community, and I want it to be improved and for us to work together with the various agencies instead of against each other. We don't need circles going out Route 9. We need a bypass. We need to sit down as a group and get each other's uh, opinions and work through it as a group, not independently and ending up with a patchwork that doesn't work for anything. Dirk, how do people find out more about your campaign for county commission? www.dirkforberk.com. <laughs> the IRK for BERK. Gotcha. Dirk, good to see you again. All right. Thank you. Thank good you for the you. treats, too. Dirk Stansberry at uh, 831. This.